I'm Tastrophe, a classroom story. I'm telling you how the world almost changed. I was at the White House and speaking with the President. Hello, Mr. President. Nice to see you, Mr. Yon. Said the President. He went the phone in the hallway and an aide answered the phone and said, It's for you, Mr. President. Who? Hmm. Five miles out, which is testing time travel, is under attack. Mr. Yon, it's up to you. Where do you go? The president was left wondering in the hallway as Mysterion raced out of the White House and got on his quadcopter heading for the time lab. The time lab. I was looking for the part, the last part of the time machine. I am half human and half something else, a ram with horns atop my short hair. I can't stop thinking about my great-grandfather, Caden. I need your help fighting the apophis government who is stealing the freedom of the citizen. I search the lab and find the part that I'm looking for in the back room that required a fingerprint scanner to enter the room. Luckily, I found the right lab technician's finger to gain access to and find the missing piece that I needed. As I was leaving the lab, heading for the time machine that my father created, I was blocked by a mysterious character. Standing in the pathway was a slim man in a purple cape with a deep green shirt and mask to match. Put that down now or something bad will happen. Mysterion says, holding, folding his arms across his chest. Mysterion stands at the ready to stop Halflinger from escaping. I stuff the pre precious time cell into my pocket and reply. Go ahead. See what will happen. I was in a hurry to get to the time machine and install the missing piece. So I rush Mysterion and pinpoint his pressure points behind his ear, zapping him with some electric fingernails that I've created, dropping Mysterion to the ground, temporarily paralyzing him. His conscious eyes watch helplessly as I enter the time machine, place the stolen part on the dashboard, and with the coordinates and dates already selected, it raises off the ground and it jolts and shakes until it disappears in a flash of the brightest light the Mysterion has ever seen. But due to him being paralyzed, he couldn't close his eyes and is temporarily blinded. Long ago, before electronics were invented, there was war on the seas and families' lives was destroyed because men left them to make money on the mighty wind taming ships. I received a message from a client willing to pay me a good price to assassinate someone meddling in the client's business. Looking into it, the man I would be hired to put down was Cam Carter, a leader of the rebellion, to get the English out of Spain. After weeks of sailing and investigating, I found my way to the man's ship called Rebellion. The Rebellion was one of the fastest ships on the sea, so it took a lot of skill to find and board it. I crept on board at night and picked the lock to the captain's quarters and threw the captain out the window. Little did I know that the captain's cousin Cody saw the whole thing. I was as as I was on the deck deck deciding if I should now try and spare the carriage, the crew, loyalty to their fallen captain and just take over the ship. I saw something in the sky getting brighter and brighter. It was good distraction because Cody was sneaking up from behind with a hunting knife drawn to cut my throat and the bright light caught his attention as well as saving me. It's shining so bright that I need to cover my eyes and something lands beside me it is the strong strangest thing I've ever seen. It, it's not made of wood or stone. It has a smooth rectangular appearance like a coffin built for two standing on its end. It has a window and at eye level and inside it was that looks like human but has small horns 
above its ears, the front opens and creature before me says, I need your help, Caden, to save the future. Cody startles me from behind, saying, You can't have him. He's mine. He just killed my cousin. I must return the deed. I woke up the whole crew. They are getting weapons to help me at this very moment. Too bad he's mine. The future is more important than your revenge. The horned lady replies, Fine, I'll go with you if you make me the wealthiest man in in my time so I rush forward to the machine and Cody grabs my cape I hear the crew messing behind me I spin and throw a left hook into Cody's jaw and dive into the strange object she pushes some buttons and I close my eyes at the light in gorgeousness chapter 3 as I rise from the deck, shading my eyes, the strange object flashes out of sight, but then I see another object materializes before me. It looks similar, but somehow newer. Out of the door steps a man in a purple hood. He looks at me and says, I'm looking for the demon girl who came here. Have you seen her? My reading tell me this was the time and place she arrived. She just left. She took my enemy. She was saying something about saving the future. Thank you, I'm Sirion. You should come with me so I can learn about who she took to the future. All right, if you give me the man who killed my cousin, I'll help you. I'm pretty sure he was a hired assassin named Caden, the killer. He's infamous in my time. I don't see how he can save anyone but his selfish self. I am Cody. Up in Cody, we are heading to the year 2075. I've worked for the president of my country. Don't worry, you're with the good guys. We step into the strange machine and I see things that I could have never imagined. Mysterion pushes the round shapes on the board in front of us and the light soaks us and the next thing I see is a large building in front of me with a flag that I've never seen before. It has stripes and maple leaves inside a blue field. Chapter 4 So what is this all about? How can I help save the future and how did you know my name? Caden asks me as we drift through time in the prototype machine I stole from my father's work area at the time lab. The government in the future is completely overbearing. You can't do anything without them knowing anything, any sense of originality. Independence is completely squashed out of, of kids from a young age. People are sticking to their devones at all times and fed propaganda and conformity for gaming, entertainment, and social media. Any mistakes one makes is properly broadcast on the developments. Likes and frowns, decides major laws and events that everyone votes on through their devones and planted in their for in people's forearms. Your time period was before all of this and the start of the revolution of a revolution that co celebrated opportunities. Independence from tyranny. Uh devones? What are those? Devones like phones. Never mind, they are invented after your time. I came searching for you because your family and my mother's side, she used to tell me stories of how you fought the government and helped establish the United States. Yeah, it's safe. It doesn't make sense. 
and I never fought a government on my staff. You will do it in the future after you helped me and bring you back to your time so can continue on with your life and legacy. What about the horns? Are you some kind of witch? My dad is a scientist. He didn't want me to have a devone placed in my forearm, so he changed my DNA and made me a made me part ram. So my blood and nerves don't mix with implanted technology. What's DNA? Don't worry about it. It's just know that we are family and I need your help. They can track my ship, but they can't track me. The ship comes back into real time near an abandoned Eastman Chemical Company. Cody has lots of questions about the future, but there is no time to explain. I gave him the short version with is the people need to keep in line and be controlled. Long ago, when people had more independence, they did terrible things like bring weapons to populated areas and kill innocent people just to get attention for some random cause. My job is to keep an order and punish those who don't want to be controlled. I debate within myself about giving Cody a bone to keep tabs on him, but if I return him to the past, it will be useless without access to the government on. I need him to find the other two because the female does not have a bone, so tracking her is impossible. Cody will give, give me a perspective of what someone without a bone would do. I've had mine since birth and don't know what I'll do without it. Cody will help me think like fugitives I'm trying to find. Chapter 6 Cody. I know I'm here to find the assassin that took my cousin, but the future is so different from what I'm used to. If someone told me I was on the moon, I wouldn't have any cause not to believe them. Nothing is familiar except the sky and the sun shining above. There isn't even earth below me. The ground is black and flexes under my feet. Mysterion tells me that it's a recycled material called rubber that came from old car tires. I don't know what a car is, or a tire is, so I refrain from asking more questions because the explanations just make me more confused. Mysterion asked me what would I do if I were the people that we were trying to find. I'm so overwhelmed that if I had a guide with me, I'd try to find somewhere to try and find a place to hide. But how would you find a place to hide without a bone? He asked, and then... He shows me a light in his arm, and all of a sudden there's pictures and what I assume is words, because I can't read, with it in the air in front of me, and he explains that if he were looking for a place, he would ask his Devon and then follow the direction that it gives him. I would look around me and walk to a secure structure that is nearby and hide the machine that we traveled in in a different location. Mysterion seemed pleased with that answer and touches his wrist and a flying object lands on the ground near me, then a second one does the same. Hop on Cody, these are like horses from your day. We ride them to get from place to place. Mysterion explains. But they fly. I point out. They are much faster than horses. 